Welcome to the third session of the abstraction course. And today we're going to be looking at zooming into a subject to create an abstract composition. If you look on the internet, you can find lots of examples of abstract art based on zooming in. Um, if you type in, for example, abstract uh, close up on flowers, close up on leaves, bark, peeling paint, stones, and so on, you'll find some fascinating ones very quickly. Um, some by more famous people, George O'Keefe, her wonderful images of flowers, which we'll come back to. These two based on close-ups of foliage. Uh, quite contrasting, one very graphic, the other one much more fluid, uh, a, lot, a lot more contrast in it. Again, these two, both based on bark, one very bright, one much kind of darker and moody. Something I particularly like, peeling and paint and rust and so on. Um, and these based upon stones. So there are lots of different um, subjects that you could use. It could be a collection of things. It could be a corner in your room. It could be a photograph. It could be anything that really uh, interests you. Uh, I'm going to be working from this old rusty sort of bit of rope I picked up years ago, and it's you know really fascinating. I've already done some studies of, uh, of this object. And the point of these studies uh, is twofold. One is to get to know it and to really explore it and learn what it is that interests you in your subject. And the second is to think about what type of materials might be um, the best to try to capture it in. So my very first drawing was a continuous line drawing. If any of these techniques are familiar, look back at some of the earlier um, drawing courses that we released uh, a month or two ago. So a continuous line drawing, trying to get the feel of it, more careful drawing, looking at the way the rope knots together. And then those studies exploring color, but also texture. So uh, applying paint in quite a sort of blobby way. Here, I don't know if you can see the texture, but there's a little bit of tissue on there giving it a rougher texture and it's a combination of uh, watercolour paint, pencil and oil pastel worked on here and here a, a more careful study thinking about colour using um, watercolours. Um, these studies are going to be useful to help me think about how I'm going to execute uh, this picture but now I need to think about the composition how it's actually going to fit within the picture space. When thinking about um, your composition, developing ideas, it can be useful to look at other artists, either because they've tackled a similar subject matter or just because you like what, what happens in their work. Um, I'm going to look at uh, George O'Keefe because these shapes sort of echo this shape at the bottom of here. And it's worth just pointing out some of the composition or things that are going on in this. These are things which were covered, uh, some of the basic composition rules were covered in an earlier course, the assemblage course, uh, if you wanted to look back at that. But if we look, first of all, this one is very symmetrical, whereas this one is offset. And if you were to, to divide this into thirds, you'd see that this top edge is roughly a third of the way down. This edge here is about a third of the way in. By moving everything over a little bit more, it makes this picture more dynamic, whereas this one feels quite calm and still. So that's one thing is thinking about, do you place something in the middle and symmetrical, or do you put it offset? second thing that these illustrate very nicely is repetition and rhythm. You've got this lovely sort of repetition of curved shapes in both of them coming outwards. Um, often light, dark, light, dark, or strong color, white, strong color, white. Um, and what that does is set up a rhythm. Uh, so you, so that your eye moves across in a bouncing way, it almost pulses or ripples. 
And the third compositional device that's used in these is leading lines. So in both of them, lines lead you upwards through the piece of work. Up with a nice sort of curving flow. And here as well. Um, so instead of your eye settling in the middle, uh, it's encouraged through the lines to move through the piece of work. So I'm going to explore some of those ideas looking at my object um, and doing some thumbnail sketches uh, using a pen and uh, watercolours. So I've got in view both the George O'Keefe pictures and my object. I can also just about see uh, the earlier studies as well. Um, and I'm going to be working with a blue pen, happens to be a fine liner, and my watercolour pan set. So, first things first, to think about ideas based on these two. So. I worked back a little into my first two studies with black pen and a bit of Tipex just to emphasize the forms. And what's interesting uh, at this stage for me is I assumed that I would prefer um, this composition based on this picture. I have to say that uh, I'm more drawn to that one, possibly because I've been a little bit freer with the color. Um, it's worth just reminding you at this point that the aim of looking at the object is to inspire your picture not necessarily to, to create something that will look like it in the end um, so it's to take from it what you want uh, in order to develop your, your composition i'm looking at these studies and i'm thinking perhaps i can identify the most interesting sort of areas so i definitely like this darker sort of circle here and these repeated shapes out here. And I'm just going to draw around those and consider whether that could be in my composition. This one, again, I really do, I like the flow. I think it may be just something needs to change towards the top of this one. So I'm going to think about doing something like this, but perhaps allowing it to expand back outwards in these sort of directions right the next two studies
So I've worked back into those two studies. Um, this one, I think, has hit a bit of a wall. It's become a little bit too much like some sort of flower. It's not, not quite me. This one, though, is looking much more promising. I have extended it because I thought it felt a little bit squashed in there. Um, and that does sort of give it a bit more uh, flow. Um, Colour-wise, I quite like having a few bright colours, but this strong contrast of white areas, um, which really emphasises the form. So I think I'm going to go with this. So now I'm going to get it sketched out and I'm going to collage a little bit of um, tissue and some um, sand on there to create a little bit of texture. So I have my reference here and I can also see my object, the other studies, uh, George O'Keefe picture all around me. So I can keep referring to those. Um, and I'm going to get them I've sketched out roughly uh, where I think the composition is going to go on this piece of work. Now, just to emphasize something, I'm going to use um, certain materials that sort of I think fit with this. Um, you could use uh, be working with pastels, pencils, colored pencils. You could be working with acrylics or whatever you fancy or a combination of all of those. So I'm going to start with uh, applying some tissue and I want it to be quite rough and breaky so I'm using um, kitchen towel. I've been trying to separate the two layers but I can't do it. I really want it to be very thin. I just can't quite seem to separate them. So I'm going to start off with brush and apply glue very liberally over these areas. Just a little bit of water in that glue. And if you do use a brush, wash it thoroughly afterwards. And I'm going to start to apply this tissue on there. Just trying to just sort of scumble it about so it's just creating a sort of roughness. I want it to break up a bit. So that's why I'm not using um, tissue paper. I want it to be sort of crumbly and breaky and flaky. I've finished applying my tissue and now I want to add a little bit of gritty sand. Now some people just paint, paint the glue on and sprinkle the sand on but I find that makes it fall off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the glue and the sand together like this. And then start to apply it. So. I've dried that off uh, fairly thoroughly and now I'm going to start to uh, work into it. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, my watercolours and I'm also definitely going to use some oil pastels and then we'll improvise as I go along. And I think I'm going to start with a strong sort of base coat.
I've dried off my base coat and now I'm going to apply another coat of colour. Remember from the last session, don't expect uh, a picture necessarily um, to work with just one layer. Get your first layer on, your basic sort of ground of colour, and then you can start to work back into it, refine and develop it. So, I want to just enrich these colours first of all by working back over them. So I've tried off that second layer. Um, you will notice that this is considerably darker than this. Uh, the white areas have been lost. Um, that was to be expected uh, working with the base coat, but now I'm going to start to work with oil pastels. Pull that white back in. That's got a bit more contrast back into it. Uh, and now I'm going to start to work more with the oil pastels into the background, adding tone and colour. Um, you'll notice, I hope, that in places the, uh, the tissue is tearing. That is all part of the beauty of that, of using something that's, that's very fine like that, is the way that it tears and looks and so on to create texture. So I'm going to start with um, the darkest areas and I'm going to play around with other colours. So you start working back into it.
So I'm getting something much more uh, interesting happening now. And you'll notice that um, I've left gaps in around the outside. I think I just need to add a little bit more colour into that background. And I'm going to work with a bit of colour using a bit of wax resist back into there. So where the oil pastel is, the colour won't go. Work a bit more into that background, enriching it a little bit. With some more colour. Oops. That's it, it's like a more fiery sort of look. And some deeper blue into there as well. There, finished. There are other ways that you can use this close-up zooming technique to uh, to help you generate ideas for compositions. Um, one of those ways is to look at a piece of work or an exercise that you've already done, and then zoom in and consider maybe making another composition based on a smaller section of that. Um, slight variation on that is to literally take a piece of work, if overall you're not happy with it, cut out the bits that you're most happy with and then work back into them, which is what I've done on these pieces here. Um, pieces of art don't have to be huge. Uh, it's more about the, the enjoyment and the intensity. And these um, smaller things are perfect for cards. Again, another thing that you could try is to make something um, to then zoom in on. Um, this was done by um, throwing down torn tissue uh, quite randomly and then gluing it down, drying it, and then looking for a section that would be interesting um, for a painting. So you can see that the lines where I was thinking what might be interesting. And this is the area that I chose. Uh, I'm going to show you the stages of this painting, which I did um, for a class uh, a few years ago. So from there, I went to a base coat with acrylic paints. Looks quite patchy, but you can see hopefully that I've tried to faithfully capture the different areas where the colours overlapped. Then, working back into it, um, this time with chalk pastels, just emphasising areas, working back in with uh, inks and a little bit of charcoal, and finally editing it down and adding some extra detail, again with pastels. There are lots of different things that you could explore using this technique. Uh, I'm just going to show you a slide to you now of some students' examples. I hope you enjoyed today's session and uh, if you do Facebook, please do share any examples of what you do on the Artful Facebook page. Details coming up in a moment. In the final session, we'll be looking at using uh, some of these techniques from the first three sessions in combination to develop further abstract composition ideas.